Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. Today I'm going to show you how to put a little select one gray option at the top of your combo box like that. So they'll see select one and then they click. Oh, you can put whatever instructions you want there, right? Like pick a customer or, or what's your favorite starship, whatever, right? I'm going to show you how to do that in your combo boxes in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Ludwig in Dessel, Belgium. One of my platinum members, and for those of you who are familiar with the forums on my website, people get badges, right? So he's from Belgium, and I think that means he's a rear admiral. You get a rank, right? He's a platinum member, been with me for two years, and he's a developer student. And I use the developer student tag to know that I can answer the question with some VBA, right? So Ludwig says, can you do this with combo boxes? And the this he's referring to is my text box hints video. That was a week or so ago. And in the text box hints video, I showed you a little cool trick that Alex figured out that you can put enter last name, enter phone number, just using the format property inside of your forms and your text boxes, but you can't do this with a combo box. So that's what Ludwig wants to see how to do. So first up, if you haven't watched this video, go watch this first. Now the text box hints was only an expert level video because we could do it with no programming. But today we're going to use a little bit of programming since Ludwig's a developer student, I can use some VBA. So if you don't know VBA, go watch my intro to VBA video. It'll teach you everything you need to know about 20 minutes to get started. So go watch this. You're going to also need to know a little SQL. We could do this without SQL, but we're going we're to do it the right way. There's, there's a cheesy way you could do it, or there's a right way. We're going to do it the right way today. So go watch this if you're not familiar with SQL. We're going to use a union query that's taking two data sets and putting them together you can use that for adding a bogus fake record at the beginning, like a select one record. All right, so go watch this if you've never used a union query before. And to verify that the user actually selected something and didn't leave the combo box saying select one when they had to really select something, we're going to use a before update event for the form to check on that. So these are all free videos. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch them if you haven't yet. Watch those first, then come on back. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. And this database has customers and customers have orders. And on the order, we use this little combo box here to pick who the customer is. All right, now this comes from a query. Let's see what the record source is here, data. It's the customer LFQ. Okay, and all the customer LFQ's job is is to put together last name and first name into a calculated query field. And if you watch the invoicing video where I explain how I built this database, you'll know that, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is, now there's a, there's a, like I said before, there's a cheesy way you could do this. You could add a bogus record to the customer table, okay? Whatever it, its ID happens to be, you can add it at the first one, it'll be ID one, or the ID really doesn't matter as long as you know what it is. But instead of doing that, which is kind of cheesy, we're going to build a query and then we're going to union it to a fake record that'll be record zero, which will be our select one text. Okay. So keep in mind how this customer LFQ looks, right? It's customer ID and then LF. That's all we need to know for now. Okay. It changes. Yeah, sure. Whatever. All right. All right. Let's create another query. Create query design. And I'm going to bring in my customer LFQ. And I want in here the customer ID and the LF, okay? Now, at this point, I'm going to switch to SQL view because we're going to build a union query. And with a union query, you have to build it in SQL, okay? Now, here's where I select the customer ID, the last name, first name from the customer LFQ. Now, on top of this, before that, I'm going to create a bogus record. I'm going to say select zero as customer ID, comma, and then the words select one inside of quotes. Let me see if I can zoom in here for you. Zoom in. There we go. That's better. Shift F2, right? Select zero as the customer ID and then select one as LF. I'm saying call that LF. It's going to be match up with the same field names down here. Okay. From, now you got to give it a from. I know it's weird but just put customer LFQ in here, okay? It's, it's not gonna find those records, but that's okay. It's just the way that you gotta format the union query. 
Okay, now we're gonna bring these two things together. So union and then that stuff. Okay, now hit okay. Let's save this query. I'm gonna call it, let's call it customer LF select one Q. And if I run it now, okay, look at that. It's working, see? Okay, but I want to. I want. I still want to sort it because my my customer list isn't sorted at all now. Now, if I come back in here at the very end, let me zoom back in for you. All right, get rid of that semicolon there because you got to put that at the very end. You don't have to have the semicolon in Access, but some other database platforms you, you have to have it. Um, if I come in here now and just say order by LF, that's the last name, first name. If I do that and then run the query. Okay, it looks okay, but but select one gets sorted in with the rest of the customers, right? Way down there. I don't want that. I want this guy to be up top. So what am I going to do? Well, we're going to add another fake field called our sort order field. Are you ready for this? All right, zoom back in. We're going to go comma one as sort order. And then for this one, we're going to say two as sort order and then our order by is going to be now it's going to be order by sort order comma lf see what that's going to do we're saying this record's going to be a one every other record is going to be a two right and your sort is going to be sort this guy first then sort all of these guys and since they're all two it's going to be sorted by last name first name making sense hit okay Let's run it now, and oh, look at that. See, we got our select one up top, and then everybody else is properly sorted. Okay, so here's our query that we're gonna use to feed the combo box. Now, could you, if you wanted to, put this SQL right in the combo box? Yeah, you could, but there's a reason why we have the option to make queries, right? So that we can just do this here once. If you wanna have this, combo box in several places and you want to make a change to this SQL, then you got to change it in five different combo boxes or just have a query. I like rewriting, uh, I, I like using SQL statements in combo boxes for real simple things, right? You know, select ID, comma, first name, okay, whatever. But if you got something complicated like this that might possibly change in the future, make a query out of it. That's what they're for, okay? There's no shame in using queries. Okay, let's close this. Save changes, yes. And now we got our little query all set to go. Perfect. All right, let's go take a look at our order form, which is right here. And let's change it so it, this combo box gets its values from the query that we just created. So open this guy up. We don't need this long SQL statement in here anymore. We can just pick our query that we just built. Customer LF select one Q. Now, the way that this database is built is the order form gets its default value for the customer from the customer form. So we're going to change this though, for, just for now, just for experimentation purposes, we're going to set this to zero. So the default is select one. We're going to assume that we're not coming in from the customer form. Okay. Normally you'd probably still want to leave that as defaulting to that, but that's okay. All right. Save it, close it. Let's open it back up again. If I open up the order form, go to a new record, there's my select one. And you can see that it's all sorted properly. See that? Okay. Now here's the problem. If the user leaves select one in there and starts putting stuff in here, right? Just, uh, you know, new order, whatever. Starts putting details in, blah, 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 blah. Put some stuff. Oh, 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 what's that? It says the Access Database Engine cannot find a record in the customer T with a key matching fields customer ID. What does that mean? Well, there is no customer ID zero because we faked it. So we can't save this record because there is, there's there's no matching value, right? So we're gonna have to hit escape. We're gonna have to prevent the user from leaving this record, right? From saving the order basically, unless they put a customer in there. And we're also gonna do some other tricks. We're gonna make this uh, gray, maybe select it, make it uh, highlight in different color here and do some all kinds of cool stuff in Tomorrow's class, part two. So tune in tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. Or if you're a member, you can watch it right now because I'm going to record it in just a few minutes. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part two.
If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming as long as you keep watching them I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing. Free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay. Want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my access forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members 
get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.